Okay, guys. I uh, have a very good friend of mine has given me permission to retell his story of the one and only time that he had an encounter with a bean. I'm not saying it's Bigfoot, but something happened to him. And uh, he's trusted me to tell his story, so I'd like to share that with you. And then uh, be interested in hearing what you think. Can I get a hoo So, going back in time, this gentleman, his name is Mike, Mike Weiss, and he has a channel called LMS Tactical. He's about six, seven years older than me, and I've known him for almost 20 years. We met in California when uh, we were both working out that way. He uh, grew up in LA, and he was an LAPD officer, very well known within the, in the police community out there. He actually helped train Sean Penn, the actor, t for his role in uh, Colors, the movie with uh, uh, back in the 80s about law enforcement and LAPD. He was the ride-along officer. And he and I had a lot of adventures when we were out there working as law enforcement guys back in the day. At any rate, he, he has told me this story, probably heard it 15 times. I've heard him tell other people and every time he tells a story, it never changes. It's always consistent. I know this man. He's a very good friend of mine. I totally believe him about his story. I trust him with my life. I trust him with my family, with my money, anything. He's one of my best friends. And I know he would never lie to me about something this important. But uh, he has held it in for many years, many decades, because uh, in, in the course of line of work that he's in, you know, your credibility is very important. And these are the kind of things that you don't share all the time. So he's given me permission to tell it. I'll share what I know and I'll recount it. Not as good as he would, but at least I'll tell the story. So the, uh, the story goes around 1980 or so. He was a young man. He was about 18, 19 years old. And he and his best friend, one of his buddies over there, enlisted into the army. And uh, they were waiting for their basic training date. So as young men do, you know, they're gung-ho, full of piss and vinegar. They want to go have fun, join the military. They can't really wait to go to training. So they said, let's go camping. So they decided to pack up and go for a week out into the wilderness in Southern California in the mountains. And uh, at the time, his, he had an older sister who was married. And so his brother-in-law agreed to take him and his friend out to the woods, far away from, from people, and uh, he would come in every couple of days to resupply them with food and supplies, uh, whatever they need, water, uh, lemonade, things of that nature to sustain them while they're out in the woods. So he also gave one of the boys a 12 gauge shotgun and he gave Mike an M1 rifle, which is a 7.62308 round. It's a big gun. Anyway, so these guys go off to play army in the woods, go camping and have some adventures. Well, along the way, <clears throat> once they got dropped off in the woods and they worked their ways up in the mountain a bit they set up a campsite and strange things started happening to them but they were clueless at the time they were so involved with their adventure and what they were going to do they were not really focusing on the details paying attention to the little things that were going on around them so they get to their site they set up camp their tent they uh put out all their food and everything and they make a nice little comfortable hooch area for their stuff and they go out in the days exploring trails, exploring the, the mountains and the, the waterways that are in the area. Well, the first night they're camping, and while they're in the camp, they hear some noises in the woods, you know, rustling around like steps, footsteps, stomp, stomp, crunch, crunch of leaves. And they, uh, they thought somebody was screwing around with them. They thought another person was way out in the woods and saw them camping and was harassing them. So while they were there, they come out, they unzip their tent, they come out with their guns, it's dark, they got a couple of lanterns that give a little bit of light in the area. They can't really see that well, but in the woods it's black, they can't see what's out there. And uh, all of a sudden, these big rocks start flying into their camp. I mean, big ones, like boulders, start flying and hitting the ground, boom, boom, boom. Well, they get mad, they're like, you better quit screwing around with this, we got guns, we'll kill you. You know, they start doing the macho thing, but they're really scared is what they are. So Mike takes his M1 
Granite, he starts popping off rounds in the woods. Pow, 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 pow. Shooting into the darkness, not thinking about if there was an actual human out there that they could actually hit somebody and hurt them. Well, he shot off three or four or five rounds and he said that the sound was deafening and it echoed through the valley because they were in a, like what we're in now, kind of like a valley in the mountains. And it just would reverberate, boom, echo, 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 echo. So after he fired off a few rounds, it was quiet, didn't hear anything. And then all of a sudden they heard the footsteps again, crunch, 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 and then it went away. So they thought it was just somebody messing with them. They thought it was somebody screwing around. So they blew it off, went to sleep that night. They heard it come back and they got scared. And so him and his friend, they run down this gravel road they just keep running and they jump into a culvert where there's some drainage, water area, whatever. They just get into this little concrete culvert area and they end up staying there the whole night. And they were scared the whole time. And he told me that they didn't really sleep. They just laid there and listening all night long next to each other. So next day they're exhausted. They're tired. So they go back to their camp and they're like, oh man, we're going to get there and somebody's going to have trashed all our stuff, taken our gear and whatnot. They go back to their campsite and surprisingly, not a thing was moved, not, nothing was touched. So they were surprised. He thought his tent was gonna be shredded and destroyed. Nothing happened. So another day or two goes by. So they go out on a little patrol, they have their rifles and they're coming back after the day has gone, after their day of exploring. And they're walking down a road and he says that they come around this bend and before he knew it, he said it was just instinct. He saw something right in front of him and he put his hand up to tell his friend to stop. He put his left hand up. And right in front of him, he says not more than 25 feet away, was an enormous creature. A huge, hairy creature. Here now that he said was about nine foot tall. It was humongous. And he said, you know, at the moment, his friend was panicking, oh my God, oh my God, what do we do? What do we do? Do we shoot it? What do we do? And they're looking back and forth at each other. He says, but it, he was scared. He didn't want to do anything. He couldn't move. He couldn't run. He couldn't shoot his gun. Ow. And uh, he said, this Bigfoot just Dared him. Bigfoot, entity, creature, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, was just looking at him. But he said what struck him the most odd was that this creature had a look on his face that he just seemed completely apathetic. Like he was disinterested. I've heard him say, like, he's told me the story where he says it felt like the way that a person would look at a rock or a piece of wood, something that's inanimate, that doesn't matter, that's not alive, you don't care about. Something like that. He said, like how you would look at a Q-tip is another example that he said. He said, if you were looking at a Q-tip, you wouldn't give it respect. You would just look at it and go, eh, it's not important to you. He said, that's how this creature was looking at him. It was a hairy guy, face, nose, eyes. He could see everything. It was right in front of him. And he just looked at him like, like he didn't care. And he said before he could even raise his gun, even think about shooting it, he said this creature shifted on its heel, turned left, and took like two steps. It was in the wood line and was gone. He said they were mortified. They were completely scared. They basically shit in their pants. Excuse my French. They turn around and they ran back to their campsite. They packed up all their stuff and they got out of there. Well, his brother-in-law eventually came back. They told him about it and they said, hey, we saw this, this is what happened. And this guy was an ex-military guy. I think he was Marine, I think he said. And so he didn't really take them seriously, but he agreed to get out of the car and walk with them back to the site, to the location. So they walked back to the campsite and they found all the boulders still in the ground. They had no sign of anything or anybody. There no tracks, nothing destroyed. There was no howling or knocking against trees or anything like that. But of course it was the daytime when they went back. 
so, you know, and on that weekend, he said there was continuously other things going on. He said he thought that the night before all this happened, um, that there was some strange things in the air and the sky. He, he's reluctant to call them UFOs, but he said that there were lights and uh, activity in the sky right above where they were. And then the next night is when they had the experience with the, uh, the creature, the being. So again, this is not my story. It's not something that I experienced, but I've heard him tell the story several times to other people. Uh, and I've, I've heard him articulate it the same way every single time. And he's, he's almost 60 years old. And like I said, he's ex military airborne infantry, paratrooper, LAPD, special agent, federal agent. I mean, this guy's legit. He's not a somebody off the street. He's a professional. He's educated, very mature, very meticulous. Um, it's one of the most uh, compelling stories that I've heard anyone tell. So again, his name is Mike Weiss. He has a YouTube channel called LMS Tactical. So if you want to hear his version of the story with more details on what I gave you, uh, you can find it there. And I'll put a link in the description below as well as a link to his website so you can hear more about it. Now, um, there's a lot of interest in this story and I've, I've had discussions with other friends of mine. So, and I know that people are reluctant to talk about these kind of things. So if you have a story that you want to share with the world, I'd be happy to read it for you um, on YouTube. But if you send me your story to the email in the description down below, I'll read it. Um, try to give me the, the five W's of what happened, the who, what, when, where, how, why. Um, and I'll do my best to articulate your story and I'll be happy to share it. It's not my story. I'll be your messenger though. I'll let the world know. Um, that way you can maintain your an anonymity if you wish, or if you're still a professional, still working and you don't want uh, undue attention to either your, your life, your family, or your, your property. Um, this is a good way to get the word out without actually divulging who you are. So that web address or that email address for your story is, um, storytipline at gmail.com all one word storytipline at gmail.com if you like this video please uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned i've got a lot more content that's going to be prepared here shortly and i'll be uploading very soon so i'll look forward to hearing from you put your comments below any questions you have and i'll be glad to answer those take care Charlie, don't oh,